In this video, I will show you how to find the end behavior of a function using logic instead of looking at a graph. End behavior is what happens to the value of the function as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity. Um, so, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches. The thing is, as x gets larger and larger in absolute value, only the highest degree terms are going to be significant. They will grow so much faster than the other terms that very quickly, in the numerator, these two terms will be dwarfed uh, by the, the cubic term. So they will become insignificant. Um, in the denominator, this is my only term, so I'm going to have to keep that. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is going to approach 4x to the third power over 2x to the third power. Normally, we have to worry about dividing by 0. But hey, we are approaching negative infinity. We're nowhere near 0. So if this is not 0, then uh, we can cancel these out. x to the third power, x to the third power, they cancel out. So that is going to equal 4 over 2, which is simply 2. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches 2. Um, similarly, as x approaches positive infinity, it's the exact same story f of x approaches 4x cubed over 2x cubed, which again equals 2. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches 2. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches 2. All right, let's do some more. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches. So again, very quickly, these lower degree terms will become irrelevant, insignificant, as x approaches negative infinity. So f of x approaches 4x to the third power over 2x squared. Um, we're nowhere near 0, so we can cancel out um, these x's x to the third power divided by uh, x squared. That equals x. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this is going to make 2x. Now we can't stop there. We still have to ask ourselves, um, what does the value of 2x approach as x gets smaller and smaller, as x gets more and more negative? So imagine that this were 2 times negative 1 million. Then this would be negative 2 million. So um, as, x approaches negative uh, as x approaches negative infinity, 2 times negative infinity is still going to be negative infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, it's going to be a similar story. Again, f of x approaches 4x squared over, uh, sorry, 4x to the third power um, over 2x squared. This simplifies down to 2x. Um, now, as x approaches positive infinity, I'm going to have a very large positive number. Um, so that's positive infinity. OK, let's do the next one. OK, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches. Very quickly, these lower degree terms are going to become insignificant. So f of x will approach 4x to the third power over 2x to the fifth power. This will simplify down to 2 over x squared. 
Now, what happens to this as x approaches negative infinity? So imagine that x is a very large negative number because I'm approaching negative infinity. Uh, you square it, and you have a very large positive number. Um, 2 divided by a very large number is a very small number. 2 over a billion is point zero 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 something. Um, so this is approaching 0. Uh, as the denominator gets bigger and bigger, the value of the fraction gets smaller and smaller. So this is approaching 0. And it's going to be the same story regardless of whether it's negative or positive. So I'm just going to quickly basically write the same thing again. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches 4x to the third power over 2x to the fifth power, which equals 2 over x squared, which approaches 0. So it approaches 0 on the left, and it approaches 0 on the right. All right, let's do a few more. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches. So very quickly, as x approaches negative infinity, this plus 1 is going to become insignificant. And in the denominator, this minus 1 is going to become insignificant. So f of x is going to approach um, x over x, um, which is going to equal 1. All right, we can't divide by 0, so normally we can't do this. Um, but we are approaching negative infinity, so we are nowhere near 0. So this will always equal 1. So the same exact thing is going to happen on the right. So as x approaches positive infinity, uh, f of x approaches x over x, which again equals 1. All right, two more. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches. Um, as x approaches negative infinity, only the higher degree term is going to matter. So very quickly, the lower degree term is going to become insignificant. So the function is going to approach 2x squared. So what will happen to this as um, x gets closer and closer to negative infinity? Imagine that x is a big old negative number, like negative a million. If you square it, it's going to become positive. And then you multiply it by 2, still positive. So this is going to be a very large positive number, so positive infinity. Okay, so as x approaches negative infinity, um, f of x approaches positive infinity. Okay, how about as x approaches positive infinity? All right, it's still going to approach 2x squared. Um, if x is a very large positive number, you square it, it's still positive. Multiply by 2, it's still positive. So this is going to be a very large positive number, so again, positive infinity. All right, this will be the last one. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches. So again, the lesser degree term is going to become insignificant as x approaches negative infinity. So that will leave me with 2x to the third power. So what is this going to approach as x becomes more and more negative? So imagine this is negative 1,000. If you cube it, it's still negative. So now we have 2 times a negative number, still negative. So this is going to be a very negative number so negative infinity. Um, as x approaches positive infinity, 
All right, again, f of x is going to approach 2x to the third power because the lesser degree term will become insignificant. So now uh, we're approaching positive infinity. So x is a very large positive number. You cube it, it's still positive. You multiply by 2, it's still positive. So positive infinity. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe, or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.